Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a fun video using some of the newest Waffle Flower March release. I will have a link to the new release in the description box below the video. Super cute. It's basically all strawberry themed with a couple of like background wafer dyes, all sorts of things. But yeah, the whole release is basically strawberries and it's super cute. <laughs> super cute. I love it. I love it. So I made a couple cards using one of the new like hot foil plates, uh, stencils, use one of the wafer dies. I pulled out an oldie but goodie wafer die, all the things. So as always, I will have links to everything I used in the description box below the video that you guys can check out. They're affiliate links. All that means is that if you use my links, place an order. I get a little kickback at no extra charge to you guys. That's what keeps the lights on and the heater running and all the things. So I'll have links that below. I'll have a link to my blog post where it'll be like photo picture links, the pictures of the cards, etc. a little easier to navigate. So that'll be below as well. And then if you keep watching, I'll show you guys how I made these cards. So I couldn't resist using the sweet strawberry hot foil plate. However, if you're not into hot foiling, at all. There is a little stamp set that's the exact same size, which you can see there on the screen. I'll have a link to that. And you could just stamp your image or you could like stamp and heat emboss your image. That would look really cute too. But I had the hot foil plate. I was going to use it because I do. I love, I love hot foiling. It just, it really satisfies the inner magpie. <laughs> it's like, ooh, shiny. <laughs> so anyway, I'm using that with my Spellbinders Glimmer hot foil system. And I have this Altenew, um Kelly Green hot foil that they had sent me and I got, just received it recently. And it's been sitting here and I was like, oh, I wonder how I'm going to use this. And then I was originally going to use gold um, hot foil because if you watch any of my videos, that's what I use like 99% of the time because I get magpie gold, you know. But I was like, ooh, this would look really pretty with like these strawberry images. Why not? Let's try it out. So I trimmed down the foil. And what works for me? There's, there's different methods out there. People kind of figure out their own little tricks. But what seems to just work best for me is I have my cardstock, which is Simon's Smooth White cardstock. Then I have the foil. And you have the pretty side of the foil facing up, the ugly side of the foil facing the cardstock. And then the hot foil plate with the the pretty side of the plate touching the pretty side of the foil. And then my little method is I just tape them all into place with little bits of, I just use the Spellbinders um, washi tape. And I don't know, I'm just, I, I have convinced myself that taping it to the, the, you know, the foil and the plate and the cardstock makes it work better. <laughs> Even though I've literally seen so many other makers that just, they do different things. Like they do it in different ways and it works great for them. This is what works great for me. So do whatever works for you. Anyway, I press the timer, you know, I put everything into, onto the Glimmer hot foil system, press the timer, it goes off. It takes about a minute for it to like fully heat up. And then I've got the two shims that comes with the system. And I slowly run that through my um, Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine because the Glimmer machine gives the, the heat and then the die cut machine gives the pressure. And after I hot foil both those images, the, the leftover pieces, I thought, why not? Let's, I, I have, it's been working for me, like using the big hot foil plate. This is a pink fresh, just solid, big hot foil plate. And I put the leftover piece of foil, again, the pretty side of the foil touching the, the pretty side of the plate, like just a flat plate you know what I mean and then put my cardstock in there did the whole timer thing etc ran this through my machine and same thing it foiled perfectly I was so happy it's like green and fabulous so I just removed that little release bit and now I have like the reverse image on this cardstock which I will use I'm going to use them on the insides of the cards so since it was working I did it a second time yes I was touching that plate they especially the big these big solid plates they get very hot be careful. I have asbestos fingers and I've also just got, you know, intrusive thoughts. It's like, touch it. <laughs> How hot is it? Really hot. Just FYI. Anyway, I repeated the process. Sometimes with the big hot foil plate, you need to let it 
warm up longer i just stick it on there and then press the timer and it so far it's been working for me this way so i did the same thing to the second piece so i've got that um you know discard piece foiled onto the uh, panel of white cardstock and then i'm going to use there's a coordinating wafer die which i'll get to in a minute before i die cut these little images I'm going to use the little coordinating stencil set. This is the Sweet Strawberry stencil set. And I've talked about this before, specifically with um, the Waffle Flower little coordinating stencils. They're all labeled. So there's literally like numbers, like one, two, three, four, with circles around them, everything. Um, some of the other coordinating stencils even have like like ink info, depending on what, you know, what it is being stenciled. And personally I love it I've talked about this many times I love when brands do all the work for me <laughs> you know they do all the thinking and all the planning and all the things and then I just get to sit and make you know pretty things and I love that because yeah the less thinking I have to do that that's a good thing I think for everyone so I'm using the coordinating stencils and just very simple ink blending with my um simon says stamp positively saturated inks i'll have a like linked with the supplies the specific colors i used and i'm using my waffle flower one plus brushes that's the larger ones and then also my zero plus um brushes which are the really tiny detailed ones and i was also wiping the stencil off just with my microfiber cloth more so because i was doing more than one image and Again, I'm clumsy and I didn't want to pick up ink from the stencil like onto the sides of my hands. I also wasn't sure by this point if I was going to die cut these images. So I wanted to keep everything like clean. Um, but the die cutting won out. But anyway, I did. Um, you can do just one color for all of this. Like one color for all the greenery. One color for the floral. One color for the strawberries. You know, keep it simple. But I use two colors for pretty much everything just to give it that little extra something. That's kind of the fun thing too, is you can step it up a bit if you want to. So um, after I did all my blending, I die cut all everything. And then I also used the new Sweet Lattice panel die, which oh, look at like the stitching detail. I've talked about this a lot and this is nothing new. Like many, many brands have been doing this for many years now, but I'll never not enjoy like the little stitching details and the debossing and all the things that, that brands are adding to um, die cuts. I love it. I just, I love that little extra something. So this one's got a little, little stitching detail around that kind of center label area and the perimeter and love. So then I also pulled out, this is an oldie but goodie set. This is the sweet matching die set that came out, I think it was last year. I forget, it's been out for a bit. I pulled that out and I die cut it from some glitter cardstock and I also die cut scraps of white cardstock and then the outline I die cut from some vellum and for the sentiment itself I backed it with one layer of the white cardstock and then topped it with the glitter layer. I adhered that to the vellum outline and then the final layer of the white cardstock I'm adhering underneath the vellum. This will pop the sentiment up a little bit. It'll get the vellum to float a tiny little bit. And it will also make it easier to adhere this because, like I always say, adhesive shows through vellum. And, you know, normally I'll just trace along the back of the die cut word with my glue, but it can sometimes be a little iffy. So adhering another die cut piece behind it just makes it a little easier. And it just gives it a little, that little extra something. So after I adhered my sentiments, I also am using the little, um, this is the Sweet Plates Sentiments. It has a bunch of like berry themed sentiments. Like I said, this whole release is berry themed. It's just, it's, it's so cute, seriously. So I took uh, one of the sentiments that said Sweet Birthday Wishes and I masked off the sweet word with just a piece of washi tape. And I was inking that up with the, the darker shade of green ink. That's the Lucky ink pad that I used. And I've shown in, again, in many videos, I will just, you know, cut apart my sentiments. I don't have a problem with that. This time I chose not to and just did because it was also very simple masking, you know, really easy. So I felt no need to cut the, the stamp apart this time. So I stamped just the birthday wishes from that sentiment using that same green ink and then just trim that down with my uh, paper trimmer. And then for my card bases, I'm using that lucky ink and a blending brush. This is going to look like a hot mess. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 
<laughs> because that that panel, that sweet lattice panel right there is going to cover that center bit where it's like gross, you know, because I just, I'm not worrying about getting a smooth blend or anything like that. Like I'm going straight from, you know, the ink pad with my blending brush right onto that card front because that part gets covered up. So I don't have to worry about like making it pretty. I just wanted a bit of that green color behind the, the die cut just to give it that little extra something. So I did that on both of my card fronts. And then on the inside of my card, um, I'm going to stamp another sentiment from that Sweet Plates sentiment set. And I'm going to use those reverse foiled images that I die cut with the coordinating wafer die. So I lined up my sentiment in my Misty. And I'm going to stamp that with the darker um, pink shade. This is Simon's Cherry ink. So I'm going to stamp that sentiment onto the insides of the cards with that darker ink. And then I'm going to adhere those reverse foiled... Um, reverse foiled sweet strawberry images. So I'm going to adhere those to the insides with my craft tacky glue. Get that adhered to both of the insides of the cards and then I let it sit for a couple of minutes to let the glue dry. And then once I've got the glue dry I can flip both of these cards over and then just trim off the little bits that are hanging over the edges of the card base. And both these cards are going to be top folding A2 white note cards. So four and a quarter by five and a half. So flip those over, trimmed off the, the bits hanging off the sides. And then for the card fronts, I'm going to one, reinforce the, the score line with just with my Teflon bone folder. So run that along these, fold up these cards. And then I'm going to adhere the die cut uh, sweet lattice panel. So run my glue around the, the perimeter, run it along the lattice here and there, stick it down the, the center. And then when I'm doing multiples like this and um, and I'm in a hurry or I just, I don't want to sit and hold it down. I just stick things under my Misty. It works. So, or you know, anything just large, flat, heavy, that works too. I've got a couple of huge acrylic blocks I've shown as well. Whatever's kind of handy. So that's just going to hold that down till the glue dries. And then I can do the same thing to the second card front. And then same thing. I'll just stick it under my Misty. Let that sit there. If I need extra weight, I'll like sometimes pile things up on top of it. <laughs> just depends on like the, the level of, you know, pressure I'm needing to, you know, hold all the things down. But for stuff like this, it, it's just simple. So let that dry. And then I'm going to adhere my um, main focus sweet strawberries to both of these cards. So I'm going to tear those down and then I'm going to adhere the die cut sentiments. And like I was saying earlier, it's so much easier to adhere when there's um, the cardstock die cut on the back. So I can just follow that without having to be as careful, if that makes sense. Because usually you do, you need to hide the glue behind the die cut word because if it gets onto the vellum, you can just see it through the vellum and it just doesn't look very nice. So adhered those sentiments into place. And then for the little birthday wishes, like sentiment strip, I'm popping that up with a little bit of the waffle flower thin foam strips. So pop that into place. And then as my final little bits of embellishments, I pulled out a couple of the newer um, candy dots from waffle flower. I had the up and running and the enchanted because I wanted one of them had the right shade of green and one of them had the right shade of like kind of pinky red. <laughs> So peeled those off. I just use my die pick because they're self-adhesive. So I just use my die pick to like peel them off from the backing sheet and then press them into place. And then it could be done here, but I decided to pull out my white gel pen and just add little, little highlights and whatnot to these hot foil images just to give them that little extra something. You know, because usually it's like splatter, that sort of a thing. But I try to avoid doing splatter when I have anything with vellum. So since the sentiment was already in place, I couldn't do splatter because splatter either just won't dry on vellum or it just takes so long that it's pretty much guaranteed I'm going to smear it and make a mess before it has time to dry. So I use my gel pen instead and just add a little, little highlights here and there. So that finished off the cards. Like I said in the intro, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. I will also link to my Instagram because the image for this, I will have this post on my Instagram and there's a giveaway tied to it as well. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can find me. It'll be linked 
directly below the video in the description box. You can just expand that for those that are interested. And yeah, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I would love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.